Okay, I'm making this video because I want to get to the bottom line of this Christian rap. And here's my take on it. And the reason why I can really pretty much expound on this topic because, you know, I had a record label. See, just because... See, you never know what people come from. See, just because y'all see me and I got these little subscribers and my grammar is not too good or whatever the case may be, it doesn't mean that I've been in the light of a certain light that, you know, is in the light that people gravitate to these uh, celebrities and rap and so forth. So I've been in that light before. I had a record label. Um, some of your artists that you're listening to today are some of the artists that was on my label that I let them out of their contract when I left the music, the music industry. You know, I almost signed a deal with 50 Cent, with Interscope. You know, um, I later signed with Indie Records and um, because my label wasn't doing too good, so I had to sign, so therefore I can be able to um, help my artists, you know, because I was kind of going broke, you know, because they felt like they wanted to be rap stars already. And so, you know, they wouldn't show up to the, 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 the video shoot. Um, promotions that we had, um, you know, they just felt like they were rock stars and, you know, they always wanted advances and advances and I was just so much putting out more money than I was receiving it and smoking more heavier than I should have. And so, um, it all started back where I started with this young, uh, kid and, um, I wrote raps for him and, you know, he, we blew up together and I remember Garth Brooks coming to my house and we sat and we got drunk off our, our bus, boy. I remember he broke my chair. But he introduced me to 40 Glock. 40 Glock is actually is a, um, 50 Cent, was 50 Cent personal assistant. So I spoke to him and then it got to 50 and then 50 wanted to pretty much buy, buy me out, buy my artists out and the music that I was um, affiliated in. So, you know, I didn't want to pretty much go that route. Interscope was looking at my um, artist and wanted to take my artist from me and take me off of everything. So it was almost a close signing there. Um, and his artist was, was known, you know, he beefed with Diggy Simmons, um, T.I. Um, wanted to, um, wanted my artist, um, I was in, in, in communications with him, but it didn't go as far as that. Anyway, I'm not boasting upon, upon that, but like I said, I've been in the music industry. I, I did shows. I toured. Um, I had uh, I was an artist myself when I was in, um, before I got saved, I was making an album. And um, right before I started making my album, you know, that's when I was called. And so I let everybody out their contracts. I turned my back on the music industry. That's just something that I didn't want to do because I know what the music industry is pretty much consist of, right? But see, here's the thing with Christian rap and with those that feel that, you know, Christian rap is is acceptable and it's not. See, rap was, you know, that was, rap was man-made. It was created in the 1970s. And the first person to start a Christian rap was uh, 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 Rocka, Coca Rock, Coca Rock. And he wasn't even a Christian, you know. He was just trying to go down a different avenue to see um, if he can mix that in. And, and it so happened it worked, and so people started gravitating to it. But in the Bible here in Psalms 98, 5, it say, Make music to the Lord with harps, and with harps and with sounds of singing, with trumpets, and the blast of rams of horns, and shout for the for joy before the Lord your King. See the see people what they misconstrued is that, you know, this is what the devil does. We have to remember that he's in charge. He was in charge of the music. He was a musician. So when he got kicked out of heaven, he kind of knew what he was going to do. So so he let this rap surface. Rap is about killing people. Uh, it's supposed to be a culture thing, but we all know what rap is consists of, right? And if you look at these people that are trying to, they're trying, Christians are trying to imitate that. Some Christians are trying to imitate that because why? It's a money marketing thing, right? You can be seen and that's why they start looking like these rap videos and that's why they, the beat starts sounding. I don't know who in their right mind can feel the Holy Spirit off of a beat that sound like the baby or sound like these, these rappers that's out today. Music is a feel, right? 
I know rap music, it, it, back back then, you know, it had me feeling like, you know, I'm feeling like, yeah, sometimes I want to ride. Sometimes, you know what I mean, I just, you know, I, I just, I feel cool. Or sometimes I just feel like just, you know, F you. You know, just, it made me vulgar. It made me loud. It made me want to get in my car and drive crazy and roll like, you know, uh, you know, that's what that music does. And for them to put the, put try to talk about Christ in that type of setting of music. And if you know, that, okay, if you're a pastor and you want to make Christian rap, then why not rap in a suit? Why not rap in, why you have to dress like how they dress? Why your videos have to imitate how they imitate? Why you have to do the lingo how their lingo is in the rap um, um, community, in the industry? It, but it's all about money. It's all about putting out albums. And this is and this is why you have to be careful. That's why in the, in the Bible, it, it, I, I written it down in Ephesians five nine from Psalms um, ninety five to Hebrews two twelve to Psalm seventy one to Exodus five five one Psalms one hundred five Psalms forty nine. You got Psalms one hundred one. You got Psalms one fifty Colossians Revelation fourteen uh, to three four. All these things talks about singing songs. Nothing is imitating about see the Lord like something soothing. But even but even these 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 singers they fall suit. Look with Mary Mary, you know, when that show came out, it exposed them because it wasn't about the music, it was about record sales, and you see how they clashed. Oh, my thing went out again, and you see how they 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 pretty much clashed and stuff like that. So this is the thing that we have to understand, you know, because even um, Lee Andrew Johnson. She she started, she sung at the brat's wedding. Same sex. Two women getting married. See, because it's not about the music for the Lord. It's about record sales. It's about money. It's, it, it, it's the things that they're doing is never about the uh, 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 uplifting. It's about generating things for themselves. And I keep trying to show you guys this. You get what I'm saying? The Lord, in the Bible, it speaks all about singing. But see, people want to mix in things to feel to uh, to feel like they're doing something for the Lord. But the Lord is totally against things that imitates the world. And I can speak on this because I was in the music industry. I know how the music industry works. I've been around big names. I toured. I had my own label. Some of these rappers that sound, I'm going to say no name, they, they, they were on my label. I let them out of their label. Because I was departing from the industry. Because I was, the Lord was working on me and I knew when he called me, it's like, I got to let all this go. So I cut my ties and cut my, my, my losses with it. I know how the inside of the business operates and how it works. It's a cold game. It is nothing th to be played with. And it's, it's, it's nothing biblical there. Now, if you want to make music for the Lord, there's a way to make music for the Lord, Right? You got these singers like Marvin Sapp or whatever. These, this is music that 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 people like. You, you know, you it's it's feel good music. I can't cry for joy off in a rap. You get what I'm saying? That's the point I'm trying to make, and I'm trying to get to I'm trying to get to the point so y'all can be able to see that this is not this is this is demonic forces, and these people think that they're doing a service for people because why they feel like oh I'm trying to win over the generation, whatever the case may be. You know, you're not winning over the generation by lukewarming this generation down by feeding them stuff that don't belong there. Because they want to reach a certain it's a it's a it's a way to reach. I don't reach I, I reach the I you reach them by your background. By what you come from. And I have reached many because I come from that light. And they say, wow, you've been there, you've done that, you've been around it. Wow, you know, and, and, and I tell them about my story. And then I, I tell them how the Lord uh, saved me and changed me and tell them about the, 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 the pros and the cons of it and told them the things that I experienced and the hardships and stuff like that to the point where now it detoured them from wanting to be a rapper because now they say, no, nah, I don't want to go down that path. I see what it's all about. You can't make no money off a of rap. Anyway, it's all about fame. Now, it's a difference if you go indie than major. Major is controlling your life. Indies is independent. But you're still not making the money that you want to make. It's all about money, record sales. It's all about being seen. And that's what it's pretty much about. And I just wanted to pretty much expound on that to kind of give you guys that understanding so you can guys can get the clearer picture. 
Because I've been there. I've been in that light. I know showbiz. I done talked to big names. I done got drunk with the best of them. Smoked with the best of them. I got albums still out there. But I'm just little bitty old Marcus. Past the market pulpit. His grammar ain't too good. He ain't really got no subscribers. But see, y'all don't know where I come from. Y'all don't know what I've been through. I don't just get on here and run my mouth. I get on here and do the Lord's service to really, to really show y'all. Because I know I'm called. You knew my story. You understand. I don't just do this for fun. I don't do it for, for to, to, to make myself be seen or to be known. Or, or It's not about that. It should never be about that. It should always be about the Lord. It should always be about this word of God. But people want to dummy you down because, you know, they pulling the wool over your eyes because now you're so blinded that you can't even see what's really going on. Christian rap is demonic. I don't care what nobody say, and I stand on that. Because I know that the ends of it, I know the 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 business aspect of it, and I know what some of these artists is really trying to do. It's money to push an album, so therefore they can get album sales, so they can be out there, so they can be known. Hopefully they can make features, and then they become a household name, and then you get what I'm saying, and it goes from there. And they and hopefully they blow up, and then they start doing tours, and they start doing shows. That's how they get recognized. Now they in now they in the category of celebrity. And this is how they lose themselves. So I just kind of wanted to break that down. I, you know, I really didn't want to make this type of video. And I really didn't want to really bring up the fact of what I was into. But I felt that it was the need. Because it seemed like this mess is growing. Christian hip-hop, Christian rap that is growing. It's all over TikTok. It's all over social media now. Christ is not a show. We're not entertainment. This is not for entertainment. It is to really do the Lord in service of, of, of doing his will. You know, spreading the gospel, teaching, correcting, being examples. And I think people miss, miss and screw things, you know, because they feel like they, they can place the world in with, with the word of God. You cannot do that. So, again, I'm, uh, I'm not going to expound too much on this anymore than I already have. But, again, if that's the type of stuff you like, then so be it. But I believe eventually the Lord is going to show his hand upon all this falseness that's happening. So I, I know it's going to continue to happen. People are going to preach what they preach. And that's okay. The Lord's going to weed out who's the good and who's the bad. Eventually time is coming. Deception is here. People are deceived. People are being conned. People are following the things that looks like the world. And that's, an, and that's appealing. And I get it. Okay. I love the world at a point of time before too. But at some time we have to be able to grow. We have to be able to grow up and understand the truth. So hopefully this has brought you the truth. I love you guys. And I just want y'all to come to understanding of what the truth is. Because rap is nothing but just poison. It is tainted from the beginning. And now you want somebody to say it for the Lord to come and put his name on something that he's totally against. That's just like saying the Lord said it's okay to smoke weed and yet I'm going to post on my, on my page 
Me smoking weed. It's, so it's basically a saying, the Lord said you can drink but not to get drunk. We can have wine. And put his name and, and get you a whole bottle of wine and put his name on a bottle of Jesus. You get the point? And that's what they're doing with this rap. They're putting the stamp of rap in the word of God. Because see, it's, the, it's a trick. Because people that do that, because they really want to be a part of the world. But to be slick about it, they use the word of God. So therefore, they can continue to enjoy themselves and dwell within what the world is dwelling they self in. What's a good way to listen to rap? By listening to Christian rap. And this is how you get caught up, right? Because you're getting the same feel as you listen to any other type of rap. It's the same feeling. You get the same feeling. Same beat, same feeling. You get that same hype. But this is something that you all got to come to understand of yourself to really see. The Lord wants us to spread the gospel, but it's a way of serving the gospel, right? If you go to work and they tell you to do a, a, a specific way how they want you to do this job, you got to do it. If you go outside of that, what's going to happen? You're going to get written up. You're going to get fired. They're going to say, no, you can't do it that way. And you can't say, oh, no, I'm just trying to do it because I'm trying to show others there's other way to do it. You... No, they ain't going to hear that. Just like Jesus, he ain't trying to hear that. Gospel. Relearn, rethink, and understand what gospel is type of music he likes, what's pleasing to him, what's soothing, what will touch the hearts of those, that they feel the spirit, that they rejoice, that they cry, that they shout. Something to make them think. Not something they get in their car and bob their head to and act like they got a gun and they popping. Yeah, I'm going to shoot that devil down. I want something to say, hallelujah. Oh, shut up the bullshit. I feel it. Mm. And this is something that you, hallelujah. This is something that you got to ask yourself. What type of feeling are you getting from this Christian rap? We got to get back to that, to that, to that, to, to the old days, to the old ways of how they praised in the church. That's that music. Clap your hands, shout, sing joyfully unto the Lord. 